ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شر انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله تسالون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدع وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار ثم اما بعد الحمد لله again brothers it is a pleasure to be here with you for another juma and we need to start praising allah a little more and being a little more grateful for allah allowing us to see this blessed day because this day is also like an eid for us because it is occurring every week and we do things special on this day we have the juma and the khutbah the juma salah and the khutbah on this day this is a day allah has favored and honored above the other days and this is a day a joyous day for us because this is the best day for us alhamdulillah so let us be a little more joyous on this day yes place hard a lot of stress and hardship is upon us but there are times and things that we take joy in and alhamdulillah we are here and we have hope for the future and we repent from our past sins and we show gratitude to allah <clears throat> moving on yesterday was corpus christi and again you have muslims following in the footsteps of the shaitan muslims following in the footsteps of the disbelievers so we have corpus christi and corpus we are familiar with the term corpse and this is from latin corpus meaning body and corpse is a dead body <clears throat> and christi referring to christ referring to jesus so corpus christi has something to do with the body of christ this is what it entails so they are commemorating the suffering and the death of jesus so you find some muslims they partake in this day and they have some sort of um football tournament and they they do certain activities that they wouldn't normally do on other days not even for eid some muslims when it's eid they have to go to work the imam taking too long with the khutbah had to reach back to work but when is independence day labor day father's day mother's day corpus christi easter the muslims they want to celebrate it we want to have a football tournament we need to give out 
snack bags for the kids. We need to do something in the community on that day. But when it's Eid, they just want to hurry up and pray and go back to work. They just want to hurry up and get that day over with. Again, following in the footsteps of the shaitan, following the ways of the disbelievers. So this Corpus Christi is celebrating the body of Christ. And concerning the Christians, the body of Christ, it is from two things, two aspects, two angles. So they refer to the church as the body of Christ. They refer to the church as the body of Christ. Also, we have the, what they call, not we, sorry, Audubillah. They have what they call the, the Eucharist, which is like the communion, the Holy Communion. So you go to church and they're celebrating this communion and the, the priest will give you some sort of, I forget what you call it, some kind of small circle, flat bread, something in a mouth. And they say that is the body of Christ and then they give you some some kind of unfermented wine juice something to drink and they say this is the blood of Christ so here you see the people following in the footsteps of the shaitan the nations before Bani Israel they were given revelation after revelation Many prophets were sent to them. But they followed in the footsteps of the shaitan and Allah sent them far, far away. So here, this communion, they believe that they are partaking in the body of Christ and they believe that they are worshipping God. They believe that they are worshipping Jesus. They believe that what they are upon is right, is righteousness. But it is far, far from that. They are far from the paradise. They are far removed from the protection of the hellfire. And again, you have Muslims following in the footsteps of the disbelievers. Again, these people, they were given revelation before. The Old Testament, the New Testament, the, the Psalms that was given to David. I don't mean the Bible that the, what the Christians walk around with, this English stuff, this falsehood, what they call the people too. But they were given revelation before, Bani Israel. But they used to leave off the revelation time and time again. And again, we see Muslims following in this pattern, in this footstep. Whereby Allah blesses them with something and they do not show gratitude towards that. For example, they were blessed with revelation. Many of the prophets, majority of the prophets and messengers were sent to Bani Israel. Jesus, Moses, Solomon, David, many of the prophets were sent to Bani Israel. But they left off the revelation and followed their desires and followed in the footsteps of the shaitan. Today, we as Muslims, Allah has chosen us and guided us to Islam. Allah has favored us and honored us to be in the best Ummah. The Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But what do you find the Muslims doing? Showing gratitude to Allah? No. Ungrateful to Allah. Instead of taking the opportunity and being grateful to Allah, and how do you show gratitude to Allah? You praise Allah for the blessings he has blessed you with, and then those things he has given to you, you use it to worship Allah. You use it upon righteousness and refraining from sin. 
So if Allah blesses you with Islam, Allah blesses you with a good wife, a good husband, a good job, a halal job, I don't mean selling 10 pounds a week a day, 14 kilos a week, a halal income, Allah blesses you with a, a, a house, a piece of land, a car, Allah gives you something from the dunya, Allah gives you some knowledge of Islam, you use it to worship Allah. Firstly, you praise Allah, you say Alhamdulillah. And you use this thing which Allah has given you to worship Allah, to continue upon worshiping Allah. But you find Allah blesses the Muslims with something today and they use it for other than showing gratitude to Allah. A man has a good wife, he would leave his wife at home and rather go out and fornicate with some disbelieving woman who doesn't even make stinger. Allah blesses a sister with a good husband, a good home, healthy children. We find some of the sisters strained and following in the footsteps of the shaitan. Allah blesses us with something and we say, La ilaha illallah. This is from the greatest blessing that we could get. And then now it's for you to strive upon acting upon La ilaha illallah. What do Muslims want to do? Say la ilaha illallah in my heart. It's in my heart. And they want to smoke the most set of weed, sell the most set of drugs. And then we have those, they only want to violate the Muslim. This is a serious problem. Where the Muslims think it easy to violate another Muslim. And the disbelievers doing them and oppressing them left, right, and center, and they're not doing the disbelievers anything. That's last week I spoke about that. One of the characteristics of the believers is that we are humble, we are merciful, we are forgiving and loving and caring and compassionate towards each other. And we are stern towards the, the disbelievers, fighting in the way of Allah. But no, today, the Muslims say, La ilaha illallah, and the easiest thing for them to do is to kill another Muslim. Simple, easy. Sneak up on a Muslim, kill him. And it's like they don't care. So when Allah blesses you with something, do not be like the Jews and the Christians and be ungrateful. Allah will send you far, far astray. Also, the Jews and the Christians, they didn't use to fulfill their promises. Likewise, today the Muslims, they are not fulfilling their promises to Allah and to the people. And this is a trait of hypocrisy, not fulfilling your promises. I go do this, I go do that. Wallah, if you get me out of prison, wallah, you give me a good wife, wallah, you give me a good husband, wallah, if you give me a car, you give me a house, you give me a land, you give me a healthy child, wallah, if you give me this, you give me that, you give me this, you give me that, I go do this. I'll do that. And we're not fulfilling our vows. Sometimes you're telling a brother, don't be top now, key, I go do this for you. Don't, don't, don't worry yourself, I go do that for you. I go handle the scene. I go call you, I go check you, I go do this, I go do that, I go do the, the next. We're just making statements upon an empty heart. No actions behind it. Because why? We just want to open our mouth and speak. Empty barrel make the most noise. Men not fulfilling the promises and the vows to Allah and each other. This is from the ways of the Jews and the Christians and they are destroyed. Also, the Muslims following the footsteps of the shaitan and the Jews and the Christians, the disbelievers, by not enjoying what is right and forbidding that which is wrong. The Muslims today, they want to do the most set around. They say, Aki, you're not supposed to be selling drugs. You're not supposed to be drinking alcohol. 
as a Muslim, you're not supposed to be wearing gold. You're not supposed to be doing this. You're not supposed to be doing that. Don't take the disbelievers well to unjustly. You cannot kill an innocent non-Muslim. You cannot kill a Muslim. Don't do this. Don't do that. Tell our sister, dress properly. Come sister's class. We are certain. They don't want to hear that. They want to hear zest. When is the next party? Some party it had, I think it was yesterday morning. Jam naked. Muslims in that. Just the name alone. Muslim brothers and sisters partake in that. Jam naked. Subhanallah. Men serious? Subhanallah. That is evil upon evil. Just that name alone, sickening and frightening at the same time. Jam naked. And believe you me, Muslims were there. People who say there is Muslim were there. They in Juma today. Following the ways of the Jews and the Christians. What do you see the Christians doing? They go to church on Sunday. Go to church on a Sunday, dress up, make up. Go to church on a Sunday. Take the communion. Eat the body of Christ, drink the blood of Christ. And then Friday, Saturday, then jam naked. Then some jam down zessa session. The Muslims, same thing today. Plenty of the Muslims, when Juma finish, as they reach out the door, they reach out the gate for Juma, wherever. They take off the jalab, they put on a big gold chain. Smoke the most set of weed. Looking to party whole weekend. Sleep whole day, party in the night. Stand up in the night with a hen in one hand, a gun in the next. And men feel that is ranking thing. Following in the ways of the Jews and the Christians. It's just a matter of time before Allah sends destruction. So you find the Muslims again following in the footsteps of the shaitan. Following the ways of the Jews and the Christians. La ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu. Ahul mulku wa lahul hamd wa huwa ala kuli shayin kudim. Bismillah wa alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala thumma amma ba'd. So again, Yesterday was Corpus Christi. The Christians celebrating the body of Christ. And again, remember, they refer to the church as the body of Christ. And they also have the Eucharist, which is also what they consider to be the body of Christ, the communion. So they go to church and they have this I think it's stale bread they call it. I forget what they call it. And yeah. The pastor put it on your tongue in your mouth. And then he gave a little sip or something. I remember a long time we used to play games with that. We circle around and we go back for more. Go back again for more. We take in communion about eight, nine times in that one time. <laughs> That's how it was. Games. But then now, they start to go even more astray. And again, brothers and sisters, fear Allah. Allah is my Lord and your Lord. He created all of us. And he also created the paradise for the righteous and the hellfire for the disbelievers, the hypocrites, the, the, the sinful. Be mindful of Allah. He is my Lord and your Lord and we have to worship him and him alone. And we need to stop following in the ways and the footsteps of the shaitan and the disbelievers. Because the shaitan, he just wants 
you to follow him until you end up outside the fall of Islam. Until you end up in the hellfire. You are far away from the mercy of Allah. He wouldn't stop. He is older than Adam alayhi salam, the first man. He is older than any one of us. And he will be here until the day of judgment. So as time passes by, he will attack you. Do not follow in his footsteps. Do not follow the ways of the disbelievers. They go to church and they put the body of Christ in their mouth. What they claim is the body of Christ. They are upon falsehood and they drink the, the blood of Christ. And then you have now some of them who claim to be Christians upon righteousness, they're dealing up in kidnapping. They're dealing up in cannibalism. They're dealing up in sacrificing animals and drinking the blood of animals. Sacrificing humans, adults and children, even fetuses, sacrificing and drinking the blood of humans. This is how far astray Shaitan is sending them. More and more astray. Falsehood upon falsehood, and you find the Muslims following in footsteps. So they say they are Christians. They claim to be believers of Jesus, eating the body of Jesus, and drinking the blood of Jesus. And then they're joining the Illuminati, the Freemason, the Skull and Bone Society, the Rockefeller Society, all these evil offshoots from Christianity. And then they're sacrificing animals, not for Allah, but because they want to drink the blood. And then they start to worship the devil. And they, they, they're sacrificing humans and drinking the blood and sacrificing humans, even little children, that is a big thing in the States. That is a very big, big thing in the States. Plenty children missing. That is something serious. That is not, that is not false news. That is not fake news. That is something serious. But again, you have the Muslims following in the footsteps of the shaitan, following in the footsteps of the disbelievers. Ungrateful to Allah, the Muslims today. We're not enjoying right and forbidden evil. We just want to follow our desires. Fear Allah, brothers and sisters. And I also advise myself firstly, and my family, and I advise you to fear Allah in public and secret because this is another thing that the muslims find themselves in fear allah don't just have one face when you come outside and you put on a white jalab and a big beard and you come out and it's salaikum and you're stretching out your two hands which is not from the sunnah you're stretching out your two hands Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to shake with his right hand. And you find the Muslims doing this game here. Salaikum. And it's a, a soft, soft touch. Salaikum. Alaikum salam. A big hug. A big smile. Nice, nice, nice. And, and when people see you, nice. Yeah, he's a good brother. Yeah, man. He's a righteous man. But behind closed doors, there's the evilest of people. You're evil to your family. You're evil to your wife. You're evil to your children. You're evil when you're with your Lord. Alone. This is from this is a form of hypocrisy. That you're one face in public. But when you're alone with Allah, when you're alone. You're upon evil and sin and transgression. This is from the ways of the Jews and Christians. Fear Allah. Lastly, the Prophet mentioned 
that indeed Islam began as something strange and it will return to being strange as it began. And Tuba is for the Ghoraba, Al Ghoraba. <coughs> and they ask, Who are they, O Messenger of Allah? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, Those who correct or are righteous when the people are corrupt. And in another narration, and this, this hadith is collected in Muslim. The most authentic book is the Quran. Then Sahih Bukhari, then Sahih Muslim. This hadith is found in Sahih Muslim, where there is only authentic narrations. And in another narration, it mentions that al Ghoraba, they are the righteous people from amongst many of evil people. Those who disobey the righteous people are more than those who obey them. So the Prophet wasallam mentioned that indeed Islam began as something strange. So when Allah sent revelation before to the nations before, the people strayed. And this is why Allah sent prophets and messengers to call the people to la ilaha illallah, to call the people to the commands of Allah and to stay away from the prohibitions. But what they do? They start to worship Jesus. Jesus used to worship God. Jesus used to worship God and God alone. Jesus never told his disciples to worship him. But what do you see the, the, the Christians doing today? They're eating the body of Christ and drinking the blood of Christ and they're worshiping Christ. Following in the footsteps of the shaitan, God sent prophets and messengers to call the people to the truth, to Islam. So when the people were corrupted and upon falsehood, Islam came and the people found it to be strange. What is, what is this thing he's calling to? He wants to make all our gods into one God. This is what they told the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then you have the blamer, the blamers. They started to call him a madman and to revile him. Why? Because he was enjoying right and forbidden wrong. He wasn't following the ways of the Jews and the Christians. He was upon righteousness. So if you think Islam is badness and some kind of offness and joining some gang and sneaking upon a Muslim and killing a Muslim innocently, then know that you are not upon Islam. Islam is righteousness. We need to learn it and hold on to it. So Islam began as something strange and it will return to being strange because after the death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, all kind of fitness started to take place. So when the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was alive, there was one Islam. There wasn't two or three different groups of Islam. There was Islam and there was disbelief. That is the reality. There were the hypocrites, but the hypocrites were known due to revelation. There was Islam belief and disbelief. Simple as that. Same thing as today. But after the death of the Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, fitna came about, and false beliefs and desires started to come in, and the people started to corrupt what was pure. Just like what the Jews and the Christians did. They started to stray. And they started to mix honey with poison. Up until today. And even the imams of the past. Imam Bukhari. Imam Muslim. Imam Abu Hanifa. 
Imam Malik, Imam Shaf, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal. When you come and you enjoy what is right and you forbid what is wrong, you will seem strange. What is the strange thing that he, he, he talking about? What is that? That is Islam and they will start to accuse you of things. Do not pay mind to the blame of the blamers. Feel sorry for them. They are upon a part of destruction. So Islam began as something strange and it will return to being strange. So give glad tidings at Tuba is for the strangers, al -Ghurba. And what is Tuba? As the soul of mentioned, it is a part of paradise or it is a huge tree in paradise. But nonetheless, it is a part in paradise. So paradise is for those who seem strange. al -Ghurba. And then they ask, who are the strangers? And as the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned, they are those who rectify themselves and rectify others when the people are corrupt. They rectify themselves and they rectify others when the society is corrupt. This is what the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did. This is what the Sahaba did. This is what the Salaf were upon. This is what the Imams of the past were upon. They, they corrected and rectified themselves and others when the people became corrupt. So Muslim brothers and sisters, fear Allah. Command that which is right and forbid that which is wrong. Be grateful to Allah. Do not follow in the footsteps of the shaitan. Do not follow in the footsteps of the disbelievers. Do not have a two-face in the society. Do not have a two-face in the community. Whereby, when you are in public, when you are in the masjid, when you are in front of the people, you seem to practice Islam. But when you are alone, in secret, and Allah is above looking at you, you don't care, you don't pay mind, all the fear of Allah comes out, the Islam comes out, and you are upon evil, sin, transgression, and oppression. May Allah have mercy on us. May Allah grant us his love and his pleasure. May Allah make us blessed, successful, victorious, favorable, and honored in this life and the next. May Allah protect us from following in the footsteps of the shaitan and the ways of the disbelievers, the ways of the Jews and the Christians. May Allah guide us and make us die upon true guidance. May Allah make us those who are sincere in our heart, sincere in our speech, sincere in our actions. May Allah protect us from hypocrisy and sin. Amin. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa kina adhabin naam. Subhana kalahuma wa bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wa akimu salam.